the immune system in preventing COVID-19. However, you cannot see that when you stand in the sun or receive sunshine, you prevent COVID-19. The best thing to do is to obey the rules of the protocols which have been put in place. This is false. Intake of alcohol has no role to play in the prevention of COVID-19. There is no evidence that shows that when you take in alcohol, you can prevent COVID-19. The best thing to do is to obey the rules of the protocols which have been put in place. Hand washing has always been a very important and integral part of keeping our health, especially around this COVID era, it's become even more important. So that the more you wash your hands, you're able to prevent coming into contact with any um, harmful viruses. So with proper hand washing, this is how you start. You open your tub, you wet your hands with water, then you get your soap. Lather the soap, rub it together, then at the back of your hand. So you, in a circular motion, the tip of the fingers and then the thumb. Then in an interlocked way. So you rub from your wrist downwards. your mask at the end you have an elastic cord which is supposed to fit your ear gently at the top there's a nose bridge which is supposed to rest on your nose and in between there's this space to cover your mouth and your nose properly you put it to your face pull the elastic cord to your ear pull it down to cover your face properly then you bend the nose bridge to fit on your nose properly and you make sure it covers your mouth and your chin and you are good to go Hand washing has been identified as one of the most effective ways to control the spread of the deadly COVID-19 virus, especially now, as we brace ourselves to effectively control the new wave of infections and the new strain of the virus. As a bank, we care about your safety and well-being. We continuously encourage you to follow the correct hand washing protocols whenever you wash your hands. Wet your hands with clean running water. Turn off the tap and apply soap. Lather your hands by rubbing them together with the soap. Lather the back of your hands between your fingers and under your nails. Scrub your hands for at least 20 seconds. There is no evidence that when you stand in the sun or receive sunshine, you will not have COVID-19. However, 
standing in the sun or receiving sunshine is a way or a means of obtaining vitamin D which research have shown boosts the immune system in preventing COVID-19. However, you cannot say that when you stand in the sun or receive sunshine, you prevent COVID-19. The best thing to do is to obey the rules of the protocols which have been put in place. This is false. Intake of alcohol has no role to play in the prevention of COVID-19. There is no evidence that shows that when you take in alcohol, you can prevent COVID-19. The best thing to do is to obey the rules of the protocols which have been put in place. Hand washing has always been a very important and integral part of keeping our health, especially around this COVID era, it's become even more important. So that the more you wash your hands, you're able to prevent coming into contact with any um, harmful viruses. So with proper hand washing, this is how you start. You open your tub, you wash your hands with water, then you get your soap. Lather the soap, rub it together, then at the back of your hand. So you, in a circular motion, the tip of the fingers, and then the thumb. Then in an interlocked way. So you rub from your wrist downwards. your mask at the end you have an elastic cord which is supposed to fit your ear gently at the top there's a nose bridge which is supposed to rest on your nose and in between there's this space to cover your mouth and your nose properly you put it to your face pull the elastic cord to your ear pull it down to cover your face properly then you bend the nose bridge to fit on your nose properly and you make sure it covers your mouth and your chin and you are good to go Regular hand washing has been identified as one of the most effective ways to control the spread of the deadly COVID-19 virus, especially now, as we brace ourselves to effectively control the new wave of infections and the new strain of the virus. As a bank, we care about your safety and well-being. We continuously encourage you to follow the correct hand washing protocols whenever you wash your hands. Wet your hands with clean running water. Turn off the tap and apply soap. Lather your hands by rubbing them together with the soap. Lather the back of your hands between your fingers and under your nails. Scrub your hands for at least 20 seconds.
there is no evidence that when you stand in the sun or receive sunshine you will not have COVID-19 however standing in the sun or receiving sunshine is a way or a means of obtaining vitamin D which research have shown boosts the immune system in preventing COVID-19 however you cannot see that when you stand in the sun or receive sunshine you prevent COVID-19 the best thing to do is to obey the rules of the protocols which have been put in place this is false intake of alcohol has no role to play in the prevention of COVID-19 there is no evidence that shows that when you take in alcohol you can prevent COVID-19 the best thing to do is to obey the rules of the protocols which have been put in place hand washing has always been a very important and integral part of keeping our health especially around this COVID era it's become even more important so that the more you wash your hands you're able to prevent coming into contact with any um, harmful viruses so with proper hand washing this is how you start you open your tub you wet your hands with water then you get your soap lather the soap rub it together then at the back of your hand so you in a circular motion the tip of the fingers and then the thumb then in an interlocked way so you rub from your wrist downwards your mask at the end you have an elastic cord which is supposed to fit your ear gently at the top there's a nose bridge which is supposed to rest on your nose and in between there's this space to cover your mouth and your nose properly you put it to your face pull the elastic cord to your ear pull it down to cover your face properly then you bend the nose bridge to fit on your nose properly and you make sure it covers your mouth and your chin and you are good to go Regular hand washing has been identified as one of the most effective ways to control the spread of the deadly COVID-19 virus, especially now, as we brace ourselves to effectively control the new wave of infections and the new strain of the virus. As a bank, we care about your safety and well-being. We continuously encourage you to follow the correct hand washing protocols whenever you wash your hands. Wet your hands with clean running water. Turn off the tap and apply soap. Lather your hands by rubbing them together with the soap. Lather the back of your hands between your fingers and under your nails. Scrub your hands for at least 20 seconds.
there is no evidence that when you stand in the sun or receive sunshine you will not have COVID-19 however standing in the sun or receiving sunshine is a way or a means of obtaining vitamin D which research have shown boosts the immune system in preventing COVID-19 however you cannot see that when you stand in the sun or receive sunshine you prevent COVID-19 the best thing to do is to obey the rules of the protocols which have been put in place this is false intake of alcohol has no role to play in the prevention of COVID-19 there is no evidence that shows that when you take in alcohol you can prevent COVID-19 the best thing to do is to obey the rules of the protocols which have been put in place Hand washing has always been a very important and integral part of keeping our health, especially around this COVID era, it's become even more important. So that the more you wash your hands, you're able to prevent coming into contact with any um, harmful viruses. So with proper hand washing, this is how you start. You open your tub, you wash your hands with water, then you get your soap. Lather the soap, rub it together, then at the back of your hand. So you, in a circular motion, the tip of the fingers, and then the thumb. Then in an interlocked way. So you rub from your wrist downwards. your mask at the end you have an elastic cord which is supposed to fit your ear gently at the top there's a nose bridge which is supposed to rest on your nose and in between there's this space to cover your mouth and your nose properly you put it to your face pull the elastic cord to your ear pull it down to cover your face properly then you bend the nose bridge to fit on your nose properly and you make sure it covers your mouth and your chin and you are good to go Regular hand washing has been identified as one of the most effective ways to control the spread of the deadly COVID-19 virus, especially now, as we brace ourselves to effectively control the new wave of infections and the new strain of the virus. As a bank, we care about your safety and well-being. We continuously encourage you to follow the correct hand washing protocols whenever you wash your hands. Wet your hands with clean running water. Turn off the tap and apply soap. Lather your hands by rubbing them together with the soap. Lather the back of your hands between your fingers and under your nails. Scrub your hands for at least 20 seconds.
there is no evidence that when you stand in the sun or receive sunshine you will not have COVID-19 however standing in the sun or receiving sunshine is a way or a means of obtaining vitamin D which research have shown boosts the immune system in preventing COVID-19 however you cannot see that when you stand in the sun or receive sunshine you prevent COVID-19 the best thing to do is to obey the rules of the protocols which have been put in place this is false intake of alcohol has no role to play in the prevention of COVID-19 there is no evidence that shows that when you take in alcohol you can prevent COVID-19 the best thing to do is to obey the rules of the protocols which have been put in place hand washing has always been a very important and integral part of keeping our health especially around this COVID era it's become even more important so that the more you wash your hands you're able to prevent coming into contact with any um, harmful viruses so with proper hand washing this is how you start you open your tub you wash your hands with water then you get your soap lather the soap rub it together then at the back of your hand so you in a circular motion the tip of the fingers and then the thumb then in an interlocked way so you rub from your wrist downwards your mask at the end you have an elastic cord which is supposed to fit your ear gently at the top there's a nose bridge which is supposed to rest on your nose and in between there's this space to cover your mouth and your nose properly you put it to your face pull the elastic cord to your ear pull it down to cover your face properly then you bend the nose bridge to fit on your nose properly and you make sure it covers your mouth and your chin and you are good to go Regular hand washing has been identified as one of the most effective ways to control the spread of the deadly COVID-19 virus, especially now, as we brace ourselves to effectively control the new wave of infections and the new strain of the virus. As a bank, we care about your safety and well-being. We continuously encourage you to follow the correct hand washing protocols whenever you wash your hands. Wet your hands with clean running water. Turn off the tap and apply soap. Lather your hands by rubbing them together with the soap. Lather the back of your hands between your fingers and under your nails. Scrub your hands for at least 20 seconds.
there is no evidence that when you stand in the sun or receive sunshine you will not have COVID-19 however standing in the sun or receiving sunshine is a way or a means of obtaining vitamin D which research have shown boosts the immune system in preventing COVID-19 however you cannot see that when you stand in the sun or receive sunshine you prevent COVID-19 the best thing to do is to obey the rules of the protocol which have been put in place this is false intake of alcohol has no role to play in the prevention of COVID-19 there is no evidence that shows that when you take in alcohol you can prevent COVID-19 the best thing to do is to obey the rules of the protocols which have been put in place hand washing has always been a very important and integral part of keeping our health especially around this COVID era it's become even more important so that the more you wash your hands you're able to prevent coming into contact with any um, harmful viruses so with proper hand washing this is how you start you open your tub you wet your hands with water then you get your soap lather the soap rub it together then at the back of your hand so you in a circular motion the tip of the fingers and then the thumb then in an interlocked way so you rub from your wrist downwards your mask at the end you have an elastic cord which is supposed to fit your ear gently at the top there's a nose bridge which is supposed to rest on your nose and in between there's this space to cover your mouth and your nose properly you put it to your face pull the elastic cord to your ear pull it down to cover your face properly then you bend the nose bridge to fit on your nose properly and you make sure it covers your mouth and your chin and you are good to go Hand washing has been identified as one. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, may I, before I get to the opening remarks, request a shareholder to lead us in an opening prayer as has always been our tradition. Shall we please bow down our head for a short prayer? The horse is always
always prepared for the day of battle, the safety is of the Lord. For Father, without you, we can do nothing. Today is the AGM of Ghana, GCB. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you come and take absolute control of all that we'll do here. I commit the board chairman, the directors, management, into your hands. I ask that you grant them special dispensation of wisdom, the spirit of excellence, the spirit of knowledge and understanding, the spirit of counsel and innovation, so they will bring GCB Bank to the desired heaven. That GCB Bank will be the best in the committee of financial institutions. Everlasting Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that you do your miracle once more for GCB, that all will see and know and understand and consider that it's the God Almighty that has done it. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Master and Savior. Amen. 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 Yes, um, uh, thank you very much for that very inspirational prayer. I will be taking my seat mostly through the um, uh, function, but I think it is appropriate at the beginning to be upstanding for my shareholders. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the 27th Annual General Meeting of GCB Bank, which I now declare open. As you are all aware, the COVID-19 pandemic has introduced new protocols in the way we meet. And today, as we did last year, we have had once again to hold a virtual AGM. May I also remind you that we really had no option to hold this AGM virtually as it is part of regulatory measures from the Registrar General's Department and Securities and Exchange Commission. And this is in compliance with the imposition of the Restrictions Act 2020, Act 1012. So do bear with us. And I think you'll all agree, as happened in last year, that there really is not, um, uh, it doesn't take too much away from our AGM. Ladies and gentlemen, before we proceed, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce to you my colleague directors on the board of your bank. I'll start with Mr. John Kofi Adomakon, the managing director of the bank. And then we have Mr. Sokreti Safram, the deputy managing director of the bank. and Mr. Emmanuel Lamte, the Deputy Managing Director of Operations of the bank. And we have the non-executive directors, Mr. Nick Amatefiu. And we have Mrs. Lydia Essa, the non-executive director. Then, ladies and gentlemen, we have Nanama Ayensua Sarah III, non executive director. We have with us Mr. Francis Arthur Collins, non executive director. And Mr. Osmani Ayuba, non executive director. Mr. Ray Ankra, non executive director of the bank. Mr. Alhaji Alhassan Yakubu, non executive director of the bank. And Mr. Edward Prince Amwetia Young, non executive director. May I also introduce to you a hard working company secretary, Ama A. Kusi Apo. We also have with us. Our external auditors, Mrs. Deloitte and Touche, 
to confirm the auditor's opinion on the accounts of the bank for the year 2020. Um, uh, I need not remind you, but as you all know, the bank has developed an AGM portal, a platform that gives shareholders relevant information on the virtual AGM, um, which includes the notice of the AGM, the annual report, proxy form for shareholders, and guidelines on how to vote. Thank you very much, and uh, we will proceed with the meeting. At this meeting, we would like to encourage all shareholders to participate online by logging onto your web page. Yes. That's right, by logging on to your gcbbank.agm.com and type in your unique token to access the meeting online. Please use the chat box interface to make your submissions and comments. Your questions would be sent to the shareholder right manager who would facilitate the messages between shareholders and the board panel. The registrar and the support team are available online to assist shareholders. Shareholders can make use of the chat room feature and the vote button on the broadcast screen to participate successfully in the meeting. Since this is a new system to some of us, we will make time for a representative from our corporate affairs department to explain the voting process to shareholders. Before proceeding with the formal business of the day, I would like to remind you that there will be an opportunity to ask questions on each resolution and motion, after which the motion will be put to the meeting. All questions and recommendations in respect of the agenda and shareholders' concerns can be routed through the chat box at the right bottom of the broadcast screen for the board and management to address. In the unlikely event that your question is not answered directly, the bank will post the answers on the website. To ask a question or second a motion, please follow the chat as a guest. Type in your name in the space provided, tick the terms and conditions, type your question and submit your question. To second the motion, just type second and submit. Those physically present can mount the podium and proceed with their questions. The notice of the meeting is on page five of the annual report. With your permission, I call on the secretary to read the notice of the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Notice of annual general meeting. Notice is hereby given that the 27th annual general meeting of GCB Bank Limited will be held virtually and streamed live online via gcbbankagm.com, the bank's social media handles, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and GTV on Friday, 28 May, 2021, at 10 a.m. to transact the following business. Ordinary business. One, to consider and adopt the financial statement of the company for the year ended December 31, 2020, together with the reports of the directors and auditors thereon. Two, to declare a dividend for the year ended December 31st, 2020. Three, to re-elect the following directors retiring by rotation, Mr. Jude Kofi Arthur, Mrs. Lydia Essa, Mr. Nick Amatefio. Four, to re-elect the following directors, Mr. Francis Atta Collins, Mr. Osmani Ayuba, and Mr. Emmanuel Ray Ankara. Five, to ratify the appointment of two executive directors, the managing director, Mr. John Kofi Adomako, and 
Deputy Managing Director of Operations, Mr. Emmanuel Odate Lamte. Seven, to approve the remuneration of directors. Eight, to authorize the directors to fix the remuneration of auditors. We also have two special uh, resolutions to vote on. The first is to change the name of GCB Bank Limited to GCB Bank PLC in accordance with the provisions of Section 21.1b of the Companies Act 2019, Act 992, and also to amend the bank's constitution in accordance with the provisions of the Companies Act 2019, Act 992, dated this 25th day of March 2021 by order of the board. Signed, Ama Ajima Kusiapal, Company Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, uh, may, I will now proceed to present my report to the general meeting. Hello. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you once again to the annual general meeting of your bank and present to you on behalf of the board of directors the report for the 2019 financial year. Just a minute. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen. We are referring to the 2020 financial year. Ladies and gentlemen, Uh, please pardon me. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen, but I think the COVID-19 pandemic has had more effects than we assumed. Um, uh, inadvertently, you know technology. The, it printed last year's statement for me <laughs> instead of this year's statement. Sorry about that. So it is my pleasure and privilege to welcome you all to the GCB Bank Limited Annual General Meeting and present to you on behalf of the board our report for the 2020 financial year. The year was a very challenging and difficult one, particularly because of the economic, social, and business disruptions occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic. Your bank adapted quite well to the challenges by adopting proactive solutions to mitigate the impact of the pandemic. As a result, we're able to make progress towards our primary goal of providing convenient and accessible products and services to customers and delivering strong returns to 
to our shareholders. I would like to highlight some of the key global events that shaped the year under review. The pandemic brought with it unprecedented challenges and uncertainties to the business community and individuals. It left millions unemployed and resulted in volatility in stock markets and oil prices. Emerging markets and developing economies faced numerous economic headwinds as they struggled with loss of tourism, dwindling remittances, subdued capital flows, and tight financial conditions amid rising debt levels across the globe. Governments and central banks around the world responded by implementing stimulus packages, regulatory reliefs, and other interventions to cushion individuals and businesses from the impact of the pandemic. Despite these measures, economic activity slowed down and global growth dropped to 3.3% in 2020 from 2.8% in 2019. The developments of the global economy also had a knock-on effect on the Ghanaian economy. Ghana's gross domestic product, GDP, growth rate for 2020 dropped to 0.4% from 6.5% in 2019. This was mainly due to necessary interventions implemented to limit the spread of the disease. I am referring here to the lockdowns, border closures, and supply chain disruptions, which negatively impacted import trade, tourism, and other economic activities, including credit to the private sector. Headline inflation trended upwards from 7.9% in December 2019 to 10.4% in December 2020. Interest rates on the money market broadly showed downward trends across the yield curve. The 91-day Treasury bill rate declined to 14.1% in December 2020 from 14.9% from 14.1% in 2020 from 15.2% in 2019. The weighted average interbank rate declined to 13% from 15.2% reflecting the reduction in the monetary policy rate to 14.5% in March 2020, and improved liquidity conditions in the markets. Similarly, average lending rate of banks declined to 21.1% in December 2020, from 23.6% recorded in the corresponding period of 2019. The Ghana CD depreciated by 3.9% against the US dollar in 2020, compared with 12.9% depreciation in 2019. The Ghana CD also depreciated by 7.1% against the pound sterling and 12.1% against the euro, compared with 15.7% and 11.2% over the same comparative period in 2019. The relative stability of the CD in 2020 was largely due to strong foreign exchange reserve position and forward sales of foreign exchange by the Central Bank of Ghana. The banking sector performance remained strong throughout 2020 with robust growth in total assets, deposits and investments. Overall, the impact of COVID-19 on the industry performance was moderate as banks remained liquid, profitable, and well capitalized. Total assets increased by 15.8% to 149.3 billion CDs, and net customer loans grew 5.8% to 47.80 billion CDs. Total deposits also increased by 24.4% to 103.80 billion cities. Solvency and liquidity indicators remain strong. 
the industry's capital adequacy ratio remained healthy at 19.8% as at the end of December 2020, well above the regulatory minimum threshold. Net interest income grew by 20.9% to 11.20 billion Ghana cities, compared to 24.9% the previous year. Net fees and commissions grew by 50%. Net fees and commissions grew by 5% to 2.3 billion Ghana cities, lower than the growth of 16.5% recorded in the prior year reflecting the dip in growth of credit and other trade finance related businesses. Operating income rose by 17.9% while operating expenses rose by 8.2%, albeit lower than the respective growth rates of 21.1% and 12.1% in 2019. Loan loss provision grew by 28%, higher than the 23.6% the previous year, reflecting elevated credit risks in 2020. Non-performing loans increased from 14.3% in December 2019 to 14.8% in December 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, industry profits before tax for the year grew by 27.2% to 6.10 billion cities, but was lower than the prior year's growth of 34.7%. Let me move on now to our financial performance in 2020. Despite the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic, your bank performed reasonably well for the year under review. The improvement in financial results was supported by balance sheet growth and income diversification. We recorded growth in profit before tax of 610.83 million CDs from 573.67 million CDs in 2019, representing a 6.5% increase, which was mainly attributable to revenue growth Net interest income was up 29.1% from 1.168 billion to 1.508 billion. Net trading income grew by 17.6% to 166.63 million from 141.75 million the previous year, whilst net fees and commission income also increased by 15.1% to 277.98 million from 241.51 million. Operating income increased from 1.572 billion to 1.96 billion reflecting an increase of 25.1% over the previous year. Operating expenses went up by 22% from 924.58 million to 1.12 billion due to COVID-19 related expenditures. The cost income ratio improved to 57.4% compared to 59.1% in 2019. Our total assets recorded a growth of 23.5% from 12.52 billion in 2019 to 15.45 billion in 2020. The growth was funded mainly from a 21.8% increase in deposits which went up from 9.8 billion in 2019 to 11.96 billion in 2020. Net customer loans increased by 0.3% to 
to 3.81 billion in 2020 from 3.80 billion in 2019. The bank's equity recorded a growth of 23% from 1.78 billion CDs in 2019 to 2.19 billion CDs in 2020. Our capital adequacy ratio at the end of 2020 was 20.7%. 20 significantly above the prudential requirement of 11.5%. The return on average equity was approximately 22%, and earnings per share increased by 3.7% from 1.62 to 1.68 CDs. Ladies and gentlemen, the pandemic weighed heavily on the performance of stocks listed on the Ghana Stock Exchange with the financial stocks being significantly affected. Our share price experienced volatility during the year with a high of five CDs 10 pesos and a low of three CDs 40 pesos, reflecting the last four years. And five pesos at the end of Your bank is strong and well capitalized for our business mix and risk profile, and we will continue to deliver best class return on equity while making the appropriate investments in our people and culture to serve our clients. These initiatives will be supported by the effective harnessing of current and emerging technologies to our competitive advantage. Ladies and gentlemen, let's look at the regulatory developments in the last couple of years. This has been marked by significant changes in the Ghanaian banking sector landscape, largely underscored by the central bank's cleanup activities, which has led to a stronger and more efficient banking sector. The banking sector has shown resilience to the coronavirus pandemic, thanks to the recent increase in minimum regulatory capital, as well as regulatory reliefs and interventions by the Bank of Ghana. The following were some of the regulatory and policy interventions introduced by Bank of Ghana during the year. One, lowering of the monetary policy rate by 150 basis points to 14.5%. The primary reserve requirement for banks was lowered from 10% to 8% to provide additional liquidity to banks. The bank's capital conservation buffer was reduced from 3% to 1.5%. Provision for loans in other loans, especially mentioned OLM category, was reduced from 10% to 5%. Restrictions were imposed on dividend and other capital distributions for the financial year 2020 and 2021 to preserve liquidity and capital. The Bank of Ghana also requested banks to grant three to 12 months moratorium on principal payments on loans granted to customers in the worst pandemic hit sectors. Consistent with global trends, the anti-money laundering, combating, uh, the anti -money laundering and combating the fin financing of terrorism act guidelines were revised by the Bank of Ghana and the Credit Reporting Regulation, Regulations 2020 and Borrowers and Lenders Act 2020 were passed into law. Ladies and gentlemen, your bank demonstrated commitment to our customers and employees during these difficult times by undertaking a number of initiatives. The bank engaged customers of the bank, identified those in the hard hit sectors of the economy, and supported them with concessionary rates and moratorium on interest and principal on loan facilities. As part of this exercise, the bank restructured loans, totaling 799.92 million to 130 corporate and SME customers. During the year under review, 
the bank invested in personal protective equipment and the broader COVID-19 protocols to ensure the health and safety of clients and employees. The future, let's look at our digital journey. The future of banking, and I dare say of all other businesses is clear. We all have to adjust to the new normal precipitated by the COVID-19 pandemic and reconstruct our business models by leveraging technology to safely deliver customer expectations. It is a matter of record that the board of your bank has right from the onset set digitalization as the key to driving shareholder value. Accelerating digital capabilities is a key driver of our future growth and transformation. The current situation resulting from the pandemic makes it even more critical to readjust and accelerate our digitalization program. Ladies and gentlemen, we continued to make progress in our transformation st strategy. We are on course to create an organization that is resilient, agile, and efficient across our digital platforms to make banking easier and more convenient for our cherished customers. Our flagship mobile money wallet platform, G Money, continues to grow, and we use the platform to make payments on behalf of corporates and individuals. Additionally, we deployed for the first time a GCB mobile app that customers can download. Customers can download freely from either Apple or Google or Google Play Store. This provided an opportunity for our customers to access and perform banking services, including funds transfer and bill payments at their convenience. As part of our digitalization initiatives, we implemented the GHQR and own and operate an in-house switch service for all the major card schemes, i.e. MasterCard, China Union Pay, GH Link, and this has made it possible for GCB to carry out the instant issuance of all debit cards for the card schemes. Managing risk in a constantly changing business environment is a key priority for your bank. We will therefore continue to prioritize investment in enterprise risk management and innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, there were some key management changes in your bank. In September 2020, our managing director, Mr. Ray Sowa's tenure of office ended after a successful career with the bank. On behalf of the board, I wish Mr. Ray Sowa success in his future endeavors. He was replaced in November 2020 by Mr. John Kofi Adomakon, a banker with a wealth of international and local experience. Mr. Samuel Amankwa, our Deputy Managing Director of Operations, retired during the year after 20 years of meritorious service to the bank. He was replaced by Mr. Emmanuel Odate Lamte, a seasoned banker. The appointment of Mr. John Kofi Adumakon and Mr. Emmanuel Odati Lamte have since been approved by the Central Bank in line with the Corporate Governance Directives. We welcome both of them to the GCB fraternity and wish them a successful career in the bank. We believe we have the right leadership in place for the challenges that lie ahead and will strengthen talent management and leadership development within the bank to create a leadership pipeline that will be able to support the bank's managerial requirements. Ladies and gentlemen, in due course and during the AGM, um, these directors will be presented to you for your approval. Our way forward, ladies and gentlemen, is basically by sustaining a competitive advantage in, 
in 2020 and beyond. This requires us to effectively navigate the changing dynamics of the banking industry. We recognize that the intensifying competition and challenging macroeconomic environment requires banks to be nimble and innovative to serve their customers more efficiently. Whilst your bank has made good progress in many fronts over the years, we have recently refreshed our bank-wide strategy and sharpened our focus on three identified pillars. These are revenue growth and profitability, operational resilience, and talent development and an enabling culture. Our ambition is to assume a leadership position in the wholesale banking market, in addition to our dominance in the retail banking market. I'm confident that we have the capacity to dominate the banking sector in Ghana by leveraging our strong balance sheet, branch network, large and growing client base, improving internal collaboration, and our rich heritage as an indigenous Ghanaian bank. Our corporate governance, rigorous and effective corporate governance is essential for the long-term success of your bank. The board therefore remains committed to fulfilling its corporate governance obligations and responsibilities in the best interest of the bank and its shareholders by adhering to the Bank of Ghana corporate governance directives and best industry practices. We are very passionate about good conduct and instilling a culture of ethical behavior in all our employees. We remain focused on values and principles that enable us to exchange, to exercise good judgment and make the right decisions in the exercise of our mandate. During the year, in accordance with Bank of Ghana directives, training, certification, and performance evaluation of directors were duly carried out. And I can confirm to you, our shareholders, that the board, in the exercise of its mandate, has observed all the Bank of Ghana corporate governance directives, its own governance protocols, as well as all other relevant regulations. GCB is committed to being a good corporate citizen in the communities that we serve. Our focus is giving back to the society in the areas of health, education, sports, financial inclusion, and the environment. This focus includes support for other activities that contributes to positive change with meaningful impact in our communities. Having operated in Ghana for over 60 years, we are living our Bank for Life promise. During the year, notwithstanding the difficult operating environment, we invested a total of 8.04 million cities in corporate social responsibility, down marginally compared to the 2019 figure. Dividends. Your bank pursues a prudent dividend policy that ensures a reasonable return to shareholders whilst maintaining the growth and appreciation of the share value. Accordingly, based on our 2020 profits, strong capital and liquidity, the board of directors recommend a dividend payment of 0.25 pesos per share, representing a 25% increase in 2019. We have obtained regulatory approval from the Bank of Ghana and subject to your approval, the, the dividend payment will be made to all shareholders registered in the books of GCB at the close of business on Friday, May 21st, 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, we have made good progress in spite of the challenges that came with the COVID-19 pandemic. On behalf of the board, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to the management and staff of the bank for their commitment and dedication throughout this difficult year, going the extra mile in 2020 
to grow the business and ensuring that we deliver value to all our stakeholders. To our customers, you are the reason why we remain in business. We say thank you for your custom. Respectfully, I would like to recognize the support of our shareholders and say a big thank you to them for the opportunity to be of service to you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I will now ask the external auditors of the bank to read their report, which can be found on pages 46 to 51 of the annual report. Good morning. Distinguished shareholders, Board Chairman, Directors, Management of GCB Bank present, I present to you Independent Auditors Report to the shareholders of GCB Bank Limited. Mr. Chairman, with your permission, um, can I read the abridged version of the opinion, if you agree? Mr. Chairman, I'm asking if you give me permission to read a bridge version of the opinion, please. Uh, I, I take it that the bridge version carries all the salient points for the shareholders. Yes, Mr. So Chairman. You, you may Thank proceed then. Thank you. Independent auditors report to the shareholders of GCB Bank. Report on the audit of the consolidated and separate financial statement. Opinion, we have audited the consolidated and separate financial statement of GCB Bank Limited and its subsidiary. Together, the group and the bank set out on pages 52 to 143, which comprise the consolidated and separate statement of financial position as of 31 December 2020, and the consolidated and separate statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, consolidated and separate statement of changes in equity, and consolidated and separate statement of cash flows for the year then ended, the notes to the consolidated and separate financial statement, including a summary of significant accounting policies and other explanatory disclosures. In our opinion, the consolidated and separate financial statement give a true and fair view of the consolidated and separate financial position of GCB Bank Limited as of 31 December 2020 and on its consolidated and separate financial performance and consolidated and separate cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with international financial reporting standards the requirements of the companies at 2019 at 992 and the banks and the specialized deposit taking institutions at 2016 at 930. Basis for opinion. We conducted our audit in accordance with international standards on auditing. Our responsibilities under those standards are further described in the auditor's responsibilities for the audit of the financial statement session of our report. We are independent of the group and the bank in accordance with the requirements of International Actis Standards Board for Accountants, International Code for Actis for Professional Accountants, including International Independent Standards uh, ISAB Code and other independent requirements applicable to performing audits of financial statements in Ghana. We have fulfilled our other ethical responsibilities in accordance 
with the standards and code and other ethical requirements that are relevant to our audit of the financial statements in Ghana. We believe that the audit evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion. Key audit matters. Shareholders, key audit matters are those matters that in our professional judgment were of most significance in our audit of the consolidated and separate financial statement of the current period. These matters were addressed in the context of our audit of the consolidated and separate financial statements as a whole and informing our opinion thereon. And we do not provide a separate opinion on these matters. Shareholders, the key audit matter for 2020 was in respect of IFRS 9 in payment. And you will see the details provided on page 47, which describe the issue and the response and the actions that we have taken thereon. Mr. Chairman, responsibilities of the directors for the consolidated and separate financial statements. The directors are responsible for the preparation and fair presentation of the consolidated and separate financial statement in accordance with international financial reporting standards. The requirement of the companies at 2019 at 992 and the banks and specialized deposit taking institutions at 2016 at 930. And for such internal controls as the directors determine is necessary to enable the preparation of consolidated and separate financial statements that are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error. In preparing the consolidated and separate financial statement, the directors are responsible for assessing the groups and the bank's ability to continue as a going concern, disclosing as applicable matters related to going concern and using the going concern basis of accounting unless the directors either intend to liquidate the group and or the bank or to cease operations or have no realistic alternative but to do so. Dear shareholders, I will now move to legal and regulatory matters which will be found on page 50 and 51. Report on other legal and regulatory requirements. In accordance with the seventh schedule of the Companies Act 2019 at 992, we expressly state that we have obtained the information and explanation which to the best of our knowledge and belief were necessary for the purpose of our audit. In our opinion, proper books of accounts have been kept by the group and the bank. So far as appears from our examination of those books, the information and explanation given to us were in the manner required by the companies at 2019 at 992 and give a true and fair view of A, the statement of financial position of the group and the bank at the end of the financial year, and B, statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income for the financial year. The group's accounts have been properly prepared in accordance with the companies at 2019 at 992 to give a true and fair view of the state of affairs and the profit or loss of the bank and its subsidiary. The group and bank statement of financial position and statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income are in agreement with the accounting records and returns. The group and the bank's accounts have been properly prepared in accordance with the companies at 2019 at 992 to give a true and fair view of the state of affairs and the profit or loss of the bank and its subsidiary. We are independent of the group 
and the bank pursuant to section 143 of the companies at 2019 at 992. The banks and specialized deposit taking institutions at 2016 at 930 requires that we state certain matters in our report. Shareholders, we hereby state that one, we confirm that the accounts give a true and fair view of the state of affairs of the bank and the results of operations for the year under review. Two, we were able to obtain all the information and explanation required for the efficient performance of our duties as auditors. Three, we confirm that the transactions of the bank were within the powers of the bank. Four, in our opinion, the bank has generally complied with the provisions of the Anti-Money Laundering Act 2008 at 749 as amended by the Anti-Money Laundering Amendment Act 2014 at 874, the Anti-Tourism Act 2008 at 762, and the regulations made under these enactments. The bank has generally complied with the provisions of the bank and specialized deposit taking institutions at 2016 at 930. The engagement partner on the audit resulting in this independent auditor's report is Daniel Kojo Usu, uh, that is myself, and my ICA number is provided. And the report is signed for and on behalf of Deloitte and Twitch, and our ICA number is also provided. Thank you, shareholders. Thank you. Well, well, thank you very much, Deloitte and Tush, for the very professional work done. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now proceed with the agenda on the ordinary business of the day. Um, uh, the 2020 annual report, which includes the accounts and report of the directors, have been published on the bank's website for the past 21 days. And with your permission, I would like to take them as read. We will follow the usual procedure where we ask a shareholder to move the proposed motion and another shareholder to second. There will be an opportunity to ask questions, after which the motion will be put to the meeting. I shall be grateful if questions asked relate directly to the motion on the floor. Any member who is physically present and wants to ask a question, make a comment, or second a motion, should please use the microphone at the podium or use the chat box online to make your submissions. Please indicate your name clearly before you make your suggestion. We propose that we have three minutes before we put each resolution to vote. Yes. For further clarity, I will now call on the representative of our Corporate Affairs Department to explain the voting process to shareholders. Hello, good morning, everybody and good morning to our value shareholders. Kindly lend me your ears on guidance to participate fully in the 27th Annual General Meeting of GCB Bank Limited virtually. Steps to vote on a resolution. There are two options to enable you to vote in real time. Option A, voting via the online platform. Locate the vote box on the bottom of your broadcast screen and follow these steps. I, enter the unique token number that you use to join the meeting. Click on the box labeled, cast your vote. 
Once you have done this, you will see a list of the resolutions to be voted for. Follow the voting process by clicking the plus sign. There are three voting options. You can vote for, against, or abstain. Option two involves a via short code star 899 star 3 hash. I repeat, star 899 star 3 hash. You dial star 899 star 3 hash on your mobile phone. Enter the unique token number you use to join the meeting. Select your vote option and send. Steps to second a motion, comment or ask questions. Click the chat as a guest button, which is situated on the right or bottom side of your screen. Type in your name and company in the space provided. Tick the box to accept the terms and conditions. Type and submit your comments and questions. And as you do so, please log on to HTTP, HTTPS, I beg your pardon, double colon, forward slash, forward slash, gcbbankagm.com on your mobile phone or computers. And kindly use your unique token number to enable you to join the meeting and send your questions and comments as we are going on. Thank you very much for listening and have a fruitful meeting. Um, thank you very much. Um, uh, with your permission, may we now proceed. The first item on the agenda is to receive and adopt the financial statements of the bank for the year ended 31st December 2020, together with the reports of the audit, the directors and auditors thereon. The resolution will stands this way, I hereby propose that the financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2020 and the report of the directors and auditors thereon be received and adopted. We will have the questions and answers, but can we have a shareholder please move the motion? Thank you very much. Can a shareholder please second the motion? Mr. Chairman, my name is uh, George. I second the motion. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you very much. We now have some time for comments and questions before we put the motion to the meeting. So questions and comments from shareholders. Yes, please. about your performance in spite of this COVID thing. We are all oblivion of the problem that it has created in the whole world. So congratulations to you once more. Now, my comment here, looking at the, shall I say page two, eh? the cover note. A beautiful message there. In 2017, GCB purchased and assumed some specific asset liabilities for two individual indigenous banks. In a single part of its strategy of total market dominance, the bigger and better GCB is currently focused on revenue growth and profitability. 
operational excellence and development to deliver world-class services and superior value to stakeholders. That is excellent idea. My question is, just to urge the board and management, because of these uh, sales and assumption policy that the bank had, uh, there have been a number of uh, legal issues coming up. And uh, I wouldn't like the board and management, and for that matter, the bank to waste so much money in these legal tussles. So that is just by way of uh, an encouragement. So the board will be able to look at it. So we will not be able to have these uh, legal uh, issues on the sales and assumption thing for the bank to move forward. Thank you. Um, yes, thank you very much. I think that that is a point well made. May I assure shareholders that um, uh, the board is very much on top of the legal matters before the courts. I would like to assure you that the process of the sale and assumption was well documented and that any assets or deposits which moved into our book done with the agreement of the receiver and endorsed by the central bank is properly recorded and documented and that resulted in the net value of the bond that we have. So the bank can assure you that we will be able to deal properly, effectively with those cases. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, there's a question online um, from Andrew Stowe. He says, um, did I hear that the growth of 2020 was largely driven by customer deposits from 5.5 to 11.1 billion? If so, what special contributions did the board do, apart from the lack of alternative due to the collapse of many financial institutions? He wants an answer. Thank you. So, um, I think the board has on numerous occasions uh, indicated to us the bank's uh, digitization agenda. And this agenda is being led by the board. Why do we have this agenda? This agenda is very much on course because customer behavior is changing. The way customers interact with banks is changing. That is the reason for embarking upon that agenda. And if that agenda is being led by the board, that same agenda is leading to increase in customer deposits, which are culminating in the increased profits. Uh, I don't think it would be appropriate for us to say that the bank made no contribution, or the board made no contribution to the performance. It is the board that is leading this agenda of digitalizing the bank's processes. And the essence of doing so just so that we meet the times, we meet the changing customer behavior, and then things will continue to grow. So on that score, I want to say the board contributed significantly because the agenda that is leading to the deposit growth is led by the board. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. Any more questions on the, please, yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. My name is Samuel Dazi, a shareholder. Today, I wouldn't speak much, but I'm very happy for 2020 performance. Be it profitability, liquidity, and stability, I would like to congratulate the board and management for a yeoman's job. Ghana Commercial Bank is now rising and rising very fast. If you look at your network, maybe it's only the rural banks you cannot overcome. Your network is everywhere. Yet, previously, things were not clicking. But in recent years, 
are much impressed with the growth of this very bank. It is my hope that such performance will continue from year to year. Over the past 25 years, when the company was listed on the Ghana Stock Exchange, that was 1996. That was the time I bought some. From that time to this day, 25 years, there has not been any bonus shares. It has come up from time to time. We would like to find out from the board what has been the situation now. Wholesale and retail banking business. Both in your statement and the managing director's review have made mention of dominating the wholesale and retail banking segment of the industry. I agree with you because of certain things that you have. The board, the strength of management and your network very wide and so you can do that. There's something I saw in the report which I want further clarification. The bank is now engaging in real estate business. It has gone ahead with some buildings even having, having been put up. I would like to find out whether you have core competence in that particular area of operation. On that note, I'd like to congratulate the board and manager once, for, once more for a good job done during 2020 fiscal year. Thank you. Yeah, th thank you very much. I think my colleague directors will answer so, but let me first respond to the very pertinent point made about bonus shares. Um, uh, and rightfully that we have mentioned it several times. And it's basically something that should be done to accrue value to shareholders. And therefore, timing, pricing, and uh, the impact of the shares on the stock uh, market is very crucial. The past two years with the um, uncertainties posed by the COVID have left most of those discussions still on the drawing board. But I'm sure the management will take it up for us to come to a position because that is critical um, uh, in the development. So thank you very much. We'll be um, uh, looking at that. I think there were other questions. So you want to... Yeah. Uh, are we... Uh, okay. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Dazi. Um, the bank does not have core competence in real estate. Uh, our business is banking. However, the bank does have a subsidiary that makes investments in key sectors of the economy where it sees opportunities. So it's GCB Capital, which has some amount of investment in the real estate and investment trust, not the bank. And I can assure shareholders that um, this trust is led by seasoned professionals who are very well versed in the space. And so it's an investment opportunity that the subsidiary is exploring. It's not a bank actively involved because that's not in our forte. We, we don't have the capacity to do that. So just be assured that nothing on top is going on there. Thank you. Good, thank you. I think we have one more. Is it on the account? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, we have a comment from Tahiru Mohammed. He says that, um, please kindly, as a matter of agency, find a befitting banking hall for GCB branch at Kaswa New Market. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. And thank you, Mr. Tahiru Mohammed. Um, GCB is a very old bank, and uh, we've embarked upon an exercise to revamp all the locations. That process is ongoing, and uh, at the right time, we'll come to Kaswa and also renovate the place and make it look a lot more befitting as you expect. So just bear with us. Sooner than later, we'll get to Kaswa and get it sorted. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, uh, okay, on the accounts, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would like to seek, my name is Divine Laie from SNET. Uh, I want a little clarification on the chairman's statement. Page 24, it says, our strategic focus, the way forward. And we said that the bank has refreshed, uh, so we have ref re recently refreshed our bank-wide strategy and sharpen our focus on three identified pillars. These are revenue growth and profitability, operational resilience, talent development, and an enabling culture. I would like to find out if we have any specific targets and timelines to achieve these strategies. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Um, uh, we do have timelines. These things are found in our four-year strategic plan with specific timelines for each. But also to add to that, let me just explain that these pillars, um, uh, revenue growth and profitability, means that we are going to expand all our business units. If you notice, somewhere in the statement was also mentioned that Added to our dominance in the retail sector, we are going to enhance our investment banking and COVID, and we have timelines to achieve this. Now, all this um, uh, revenue growth becomes meaningless if you don't have operational resilience in terms of um, uh, controls, in, in, in terms of uh, a, a sound um, financial framework, proper governance structures, and so on. Okay. Now, talent development. You will see that companies normally grow with the staff they have, the kind of talent that they have. And we think GCB, for a large institution like that, must have a program because it has a lot of staff, potentially good, where we'll have a pipeline for developing those staff to take over the business of the bank and move it. That way, we even have an identified culture. Now, talking about an enabling culture, we all know it everywhere that if you have the wrong culture, no matter what your strategy is, no matter what you're doing, it will go. So through a progressive time frame over the four-year period, we will want to realign the culture of GCB to a winning um, culture. So those timelines are found in the strategic plan. Yeah, thank you. I think we are going out of time. Can we, if there are no more questions, I would like to um, uh, you want a, qu a question? Oh, please, okay. The chairman. <clears throat> Um, I'm very happy with the innovation of um, G Money. Sorry, sir. G Money. Me, me, uh, please. Robert Aluti, a shareholder. G Money. In fact, it has helped some of us. But one thing that I realize in your G Money is that you don't have much agents. It seems uh, most of these agents are operated by uh, those who have been selling MTN. May I know what you are making, what effort you are making to tell these people to open more EG money? Because it is good. Where I live like this, I live at Lompobi, and hardly do you find an agent selling or operating EG money. So I will ask, be very grateful to ask, what are you doing for the expansion of EG money? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, on the G Money side, we've got over 6,000 agents currently now spread across the country. We are at a point where we will be balancing the number of agents that we have and customers. 
this also means that yes, there are pockets of areas within the country that will be, will be expanding the agent network. Yes, we'll be expanding the agent network, but at this point in time, what we want to see is, or what we are we're striving and have clear strategies in place is to scale up the number of customers on the platform whilst we balance it with the number of agents. So yes, you would see going forward expansion in the agent network, but not just on the agency side, but also having um, a scale in the number of customers. That is how we see going forward. So yes, you will see the number of agents increase, but we'll balance it more with growing the number of active customers on the platform. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for all the questions on the accounts. Um, uh, may there be no further comments. Can I just refocus us by reading out the um, uh, resolution as proposed by uh, Mr. Sean and seconded by Mr. Sachs George? I hereby propose that the financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2020 and the report of the directors and auditors thereon be received and adopted. I declare voting open for shareholders. Um, uh, will those in favor of the motion Please raise the voting cards or hands up, please. Who is counting? It's electron. No, now. Don't pick up fish. No. Thirty seconds more to stop voting.
excuse me. Yes, I said voting has ended. <laughs> okay, and the, the results are as follows. 161 voted for, zero voted against, and one abstained. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Following the declaration of the results, I declare the motion duly carried. The second item on the agenda is the declaration of dividend. Notwithstanding the Bank of Ghana directive on suspension of distribution of dividends for 2019 and 2020 financial years, as a measure to contain the impacts of the pandemic, your bank, as a result of its performance, was able to obtain approval to pay our shareholders' dividends for the year 2020. Pursuant to the third schedule of Section 30 and 33 of the Companies Act 2019, Act 992, I hereby propose uh, a final dividend of 25 Ghana pesos per share, totaling 66 million two hundred and fifty thousand Ghana CDs for the financial year ended 31st December 2020. This would be payable on Friday 18th June 2021 to all shareholders registered in the books of the company as at the close of business on Friday 28th May 2021. Will the shareholder please move the motion on the declaration of dividend. My name is Samuel Dazi, shareholder. I propose that a dividend of 0 0.25 CD per share, as recommended by the directors, be and is hereby accepted. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Dazi. Will uh, Shareholder, please second the motion. Mr. Chairman, my name is Yvonne Wunyo. I second the motion. Thank you very much, Yvonne. Before the motion is put to vote, please do we have any comments questions on this motion. No. No. There being no further comments on this motion, I declare voting open for shareholders to vote on the resolution on dividends.
30 seconds more to bring vote into a close. Voting has ended, and here are the results. 166 voted for, one abstained, and one against. I repeat, 166 voted for, one against, and zero abstained. Thank you. Thank you very much. Based on the results, I declare the motion on dividend duly carried. Thank you very much. The next, the next item on the agenda is to re-elect re directors retiring by rotation. In compliance with sections 325B and D of the Companies Act 2019, Act 992, three members of the board will retire by rotation but are eligible for re-election. The following three non-executive directors are retiring by rotation and being eligible have consented and are offering themselves for re-election. The pictures of these directors will be projected for our shareholders viewing. I being part of the three. You're proposing a single resolution. Their, profo their profiles as we said, can be found on pages eight to 10 of the annual report. With your permission, I propose a single resolution for the re-election of the directors retiring by rotation and directors for re-election under BOG Corporate Governance Directives who have offered themselves to serve your bank in line with section 326 of the Companies Act 2019, Act 992. Will a shareholder please move the motion on a proposal for a single resolution for the re-election of directors retired by rotation and re-election under Bank of Ghana directive? Yeah, after we move the motion. So we are splitting it into two, so right after that I'll hand over. <laughs> <laughs> Respectfully, Mr. Chairman, my name is James Ter, a shareholder. I hereby move that a single resolution for the re-election of the directors do hereby be received and adapted. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can we have a seconder for the motion? Are you acting? Not yet, very soon. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I will propose that a second your nomination. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, my name is Jonathan Quefi of Mexico. Today, something is running through my heart. Because <laughs> when I see the crop of people around this program, in the world as large, I think, if I have to say a simple word, a second emotion. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So do the...
So we are putting it to a boat. This being a straightforward thing, are there uh, no comments? I shall there. We'll have the usual time if there are any comments on this motion. Very well. I shall now put the motion to the meeting for voting. No, no, it's after this. It's not yet, sir. Not yet, sir. I, I appreciate you. You will, you will get there. <laughs> It's open for voting now. Thirty seconds more. Voting has ended, and these are the results. 146 voted for, 5 voted against, and 4 abstained. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, accordingly, I declare the motion for the single resolution duly carried. Ladies and gentlemen, as this resolution has to do with a re-election, of myself as board chairman and other directors, I will hand over the proceedings to Mr. Ray Ankra, a director of the bank, for this particular resolution on the re-election of directors retiring by rotation. Thank you. Mr. Ray Ankra, please. Yeah. Thank you, chairman. I, I'm now the acting board chairman. So I proceed to propose the resolution. I hereby propose that Mr. Jude Kofi Arthur, Mrs. Lydia Essa, and Mr. Nika Matefiu are retiring by rotation and being eligible have consented and are offering themselves for re-election B and are hereby elected as non-executive directors of the bank. In my capacity as the acting chairman, Will a shareholder please move the motion on the re-election of the directors? Today, part of my tension is coming down because <laughs> I know where we are. Acting chairman. Yes, sir. Very soon, your post will be over. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want you to say now? You move the motion. Give me the instruction, then I, I say it. <laughs> Should I second or what am I doing? Yes. Moving the vote, yes. Make it short. I move the motion. Yes.
Yes. Am I moving or second? You are moving. Yes. To make it easier, I move that that resolution is carried. Thank you. Yes. Can we have another shareholder to please second the motion? My name is uh, Samson Nashon, a shareholder. I second the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Before we, I think, put the motion to, are there any comments from shareholders? No comments. If there are no comments, I will declare the voting open for shareholders and we have three minutes to vote. And I'll put the motion to the meeting for voting. Three minutes. Thirty seconds more to wrap up voting. Okay. Voting has ended. And here are the results. 145 voted for, 6 voted against, and 0 abstained. Thank you. Thank you. I hereby declare the motion carried. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. So, Mr. Ak yeah, so um, my job is finished. So, may, may I hand over to you, sir? Thank you very much, Mr. Ray Ankara. Um, can we proceed with the business of the day? The re-election of directors per Bank of Ghana Corporate Governance Directive 2018. The Bank of Ghana Corporate Governance Directives indicate that non-executive directors shall have a maximum tenure of three terms of three years per term. The underlisted directors have expressed their willingness to be re-elected as directors for the second term. Their profile is on page 11 and 12 of the annual report. The three directors are Mr. Francis Arthur Collins, Mr. Osmani Ayuba, and Mr. Emmanuel Ray Ankara. The resolution 
reads as follows. I hereby propose that Mr. Francis Arthur Collins, Mr. Osmani Ayuba, and Mr. Emmanuel Ray Ankra, at the end of their first tenure being eligible, have considered, have consented, sorry, and are offering themselves for re-election. Be and are hereby elected as non-executive directors of the bank. Will a shareholder please move the motion? Respectfully, Mr. Chairman, my name is James Ter, a shareholder. I hereby move that all the directors in the mentioned by Mr. Chairman do hereby receive and adapt it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tay. Can we please have another shareholder second the motion? <laughs> Today is a happy day. Once it's a happy day, Mr. Chairman, I second the motion of these three committed gentlemen. Thank you very much, Mr. Mexico. Are there any comments before the motion is put to the meeting? Thank you very much. There being no comments, I declare voting open for shareholders to vote. We have three minutes for the vote, please. Thirty seconds more to stop voting. Voting has ended, and here are the results. 148 voted for, five voted against, and zero abstained. Thank you. Thank you very much. I therefore declare the motion duly carried. Thank you very much. The next on the agenda is to ratify the appointments of directors who have been appointed following the resignations of Mr. Ray Anselm Soa and Mr. Samuel Amankwa, the former Managing Director and Deputy Managing Director of Operations, respectively. The directors whose ratification of appointment we are seeking are Mr. John Kofi Adomakon, Managing Director, 
and Mr. Emmanuel Odate Lamte, Deputy Managing Director, Operations. Their profiles are on page eight and nine of the annual report, and I think that their um, uh, pictures are being projected. So, yes, the first resolution, 6A, reads as follows. I hereby propose that the appointment of Mr. John Kofi Adomakon as executive director appointed onto the board on 12 November 2020 be and is hereby ratified as a director of the bank. Can a shareholder please move for the motion? My name is Samuel Dazi, a member of the company. I move for the ratification of the new managing director as a member of the board. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Dazi. Can we please have another shareholder second the motion? My name is Robert Alote. I second the motion. Thank you very much, Mr. Alote. Um, are there any comments, questions on this motion? You are coming to take over at a time when Ghana is running into difficulty. Number two, you are taking over from a gentleman who very soon, we shall call him His Excellency, Ray Sua. Last year, when he was going to retire, I noticed that he was committed, was concerned, and was caring. These are the three things I did to him. And I pray that whoever comes over, John, uh, John, it is you. So you have to care. Why am I saying this? Before I came here, I went to about three or four banks of a, a, a GCB and tried to interview some of the staff. And the way they started talking about you, I wish you well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mexico, for the comment, which I'm sure captures most of our comments. Do we have any comments? Any other comments? Okay, then, so we now put it to vote. Yeah. I now declare voting open for this resolution. Thirty seconds to end voting.
voting has ended and the results are in. 160 voted for, zero against, and two abstained. Thank you. Very well. Thank you very much. On the basis of the declared results, I declare the motion duly carried. Thank you. Can we move on to resolution 6B, which is to ratify the appointment of Mr. Emmanuel Lamte. The resolution reads as follows. I hereby propose that the appointment of Mr. Emmanuel Odate Lamte as an executive director appointed onto the board on the 20th of January, 2021, B and is hereby ratified. Will a shareholder please move the motion? Samson Ashon, Mr. Chairman, is the name. I move that the ratification of the managing, Deputy Managing Director of Operations, Mr. Emmanuel Odate Lamte, be adopted. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can we please have a shareholder second this motion? Mr. Chairman, my name is Yvonne Vunyon. I second the motion. Thank you very much, Yvonne. And I'll put the motion before the meeting for any comments or questions, please. Okay, there being no further comments, I declare voting open for shareholders to vote on this. Thank you. to end voting, please. Voting has ended and here are the results. 163 voted for, one voted against and three abstained. Thank you. Thank you very much, shareholders. On the basis of the declared results, I declare the motion duly carried. Thank you. Um, uh, distinguished shareholders, with your kind permission, my attention has just been drawn to the presence of Honorable Stephen Asamoah Boateng, the Director General, State Interest and Governance Authority with us. Mr. Boateng, thank you very much. <laughs> Having noted Mr. Asamoah Boateng's presence, I now move on to a resolution which I'm sure he'll be very interested in. The approval of director's remuneration. <laughs> oh. 
Very well. The next agenda is to approve the remuneration of directors. I'm happy to inform shareholders that the board has agreed to maintain the remuneration of shareholders unchanged from last year, which had a budget of 3.85 million. We, as required by law, we are putting this before the shareholders that director's remuneration remains unchanged. So the resolution will read, I hereby propose that the remuneration of directors put at a budget of 3.85 million B and is hereby retained for the year 2021. Will a shareholder please move for the motion? Mr. Chairman, my name is James Tay. I hereby move that the remuneration of the directors be maintained. Thank you. Thank you very much. Will a shareholder please second the motion? Mr. Chairman, my name is Helen Ado. I second the motion, a shareholder. Thank you very much, Helen. Thank you. The motion is before you now, and we have three minutes for comments on the motion, please. Very well, thank you. There being no comments, I declare voting open for shareholders to vote. The motion is before the meeting. Thirty seconds to stop voting. Voting has ended, and here are the results one fifty four voted for, four voted against, and two abstained. Thank you. The motion is duly carried. The next item on the agenda is to authorize the directors to determine the remuneration of the auditors. The motion reads as follows. I hereby propose that the directors be mandated to determine the fees of the auditors in respect of the period ending at the conclusion of the next annual general meeting. Will a shareholder please move the motion? Mr. Chairman, my name is Samson Ashon. I move that the directors of GCB Bank be authorized to fix the remuneration of the auditors. 
Thank you very much. Can a shareholder please second the motion? My name is James Tay. I second the motion. Thank you very much, Mr. Tay. Before we put the motion to vote, are there any comments before we do so? Mr. Chairman, my name is Sir George. Uh, may I know whether they are also going to maintain the last year's numeration with it? I think, Mr. Mr. Ousu, whether you are going to maintain or let us know if you are going to maintain the last year's. Thank you very much, Mr. You are supporting the job of the directors. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, I think the shareholders <laughs> too, support the shareholders too. Yes, so yes, yes. If you can maintain your own this thing, it's preferable, it will be better for us. <laughs> Thank you. We'll bear that in mind in our in the exercise of our mandate to discuss and fix the remuneration with them. Yeah, thank you. Any other comments before we put it to vote? Very well, thank you very much. In the absence of any other comments, I now put the motion to the meeting for voting. Thirty seconds more to close voting. Voting has ended and the results are in. 153 voted for, four voted against, and three abstained. Thank you. Thank you very much. The motion is duly carried. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we now move on to special business resolutions. These special resolutions, the first one is to change the name of GCB Bank Limited to GCB Bank PLC. This is in accordance with the provisions of Section 21.1b of the Companies Act 2019 Act 992. 
in compliance with the Section 21.1b of the Companies Act 2019, Act 992, it is required of Public Company Limited by shares to have the last words of the company's name as Public Limited Liability Company or the abbreviation PLC. In the light of this mandatory requirement, the bank is proposing to the shareholders to pass a special resolution to change the bank's name in accordance to law from GCB Bank Limited to GCB Bank PLC. Will the shareholder please move for this motion? Mr. Chairman, my name is James Ter, a shareholder. I hereby move that the bank name GCB Bank Limited be changed to GCB Bank PLC in accordance with Act 992. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ter. Will a shareholder please second this motion? I second the motion. Thank you very much. The motion is now before you for comments and questions, please. Yes. Mr. Chairman, the name once more is Samson Ashon. Um, it is very necessary that this thing be changed to PLC, as other companies and banks are doing. But then I would just like to maybe urge the board and management to be a bit wary since the change, the name change will involve change in stationery, signages, and what have you. And so I will urge the board and management that they look at the timing so that the stock available will be reduced considerably before it is made so we can make some savings for an increase in uh, bonus next name. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think that is well noted and the authorities have made provision. There will be a cooling off period where that old stationery and the new ones which are being ordered will go in, but we, we will minimize waste to the barest that we can. Yes, thank you. Any other questions, please? Thank you very much, Alaji Yakubu. Any more comments? Very well, thank you. In the absence of any more comments, the motion is now before you for voting. Voting commences now, thank you. Please. 
voting has ended and here are the results. 167 voted for, two voted against, and two and zero abstain. I repeat, 167 voted for, two against, and zero abstain. Thank you. Thank you very much, shareholders. As you can see, the percentage of votes in favor is 98.82%. And this being a special resolution, I therefore declare the motion duly carried. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the next resolution is actually very consistent with what we have just done to amend the bank's constitution in accordance with the provisions of the Companies Act 2019, Act 992. The bank is changing its regulations to that of a constitution in accordance with the provisions of the Companies Act 2019, Act 992. We are therefore proposing that a special resolution to amend the bank's regulations in line with the provisions of the Companies Act 2019, Act 992, for the adoption of a new constitution for the bank. Will a shareholder please move for this motion? Mr. Chairman, my name is Helen Ado, a shareholder. I move that the bank's regulations be amended in accordance with the provisions of the Companies Act, Act 992. Thank you. Thank you very much, Helen. Thank you very much. Can we please have another shareholder second the motion? Mr. Chairman, we have Pius Kofi online who has seconded. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, the motion is now before you, shareholders, for any comments or suggestions that we might have from you. Thank you very much. There being no comments, I declare voting open for shareholders to vote. The motion is before you, and we have about three minutes to go. Thank you. Thirty seconds more to wrap up voting for the last resolution. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'm happy to announce that voting has ended and the results are in. 160 voted for, um, zero voted against, and two abstain. Thank you. Thank you very much. On the basis of the declared results, and noting that there was a percentage of 98.77% in favor of the motion, I declare the motion duly carried. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We have now come to the end of another successful annual general meeting. And I would like to thank you on behalf of the board of directors for attending this meeting and for showing so much interest in the affairs of your bank. Thank you very much once again. I hereby declare the meeting formally closed and request, as is our practice, for a shareholder to give us the closing prayer. Shall we please bow down here for the closing room? Father, what else shall we say for this successful meeting that you have granted us? We pray, O oh Lord, that you guide and direct the board chairman, directors, and management of GCB Bank that they will be able to bring the bound from grace to grace and from glory to glory. Father, you have brought GCB Bank to the edge of the breach and you will help them to cross it successfully. You have brought GCB Bank to the edge of the river and you will help them to cross it successfully. You have again brought them to the edge of the sea and you will part the Red Sea for them. Father, we thank you. We will be leaving here, but we are not leaving your presence. We pray that your presence will continue to go with us. That when we get to our various homes, we'll have cause to give you the glory and adoration that you deserve. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Master, and Savior. Amen. Thank you very much for the prayer. Thank you. Are you inviting them to Hand washing has been identified as one of the most effective ways to control the spread of the deadly COVID-19 virus, especially now, as we brace ourselves to effectively control the new wave of infections and the new strain of the virus. As a bank, we care about your safety and well-being. We continuously encourage you to follow the correct hand washing protocols whenever you wash your hands. Wet your hands with clean running water. Turn off the tap and apply soap. Lather your hands by rubbing them together with the soap. Lather the back of your hands between your fingers and under your nails. Scrub your hands for at least 20 seconds. There is no evidence that when you stand in the sun or receive sunshine, you will not have COVID-19. However, standing in the sun or receiving sunshine is a way or a means of obtaining vitamin D, which research have shown boosts the immune system in preventing COVID-19. However, you cannot see that when you stand in the sun, or receive sunshine you prevent COVID-19. The best thing to do is to obey the rules of the protocols which have been put in place. This is false. Intake of alcohol has no role to play in the prevention of COVID-19. There is no evidence that shows that when you take in alcohol, 
you can prevent COVID-19. The best thing to do is to obey the rules of the protocols which have been put in place. Hand washing has always been a very important and integral part of keeping our health, especially around this COVID era, it's become even more important so that the more you wash your hands, you're able to prevent coming into contact with any um, harmful viruses. So with proper hand washing, this is how you start. You open your tub, you wet your hands with water, then you get your soap. Lather the soap, rub it together, then at the back of your hand. So you, in a circular motion, the tip of the fingers, and then the thumb. Then in an interlocked way. So you rub from your wrist downwards. So this is your mask. At the end, you have an elastic cord, which is supposed to fit your ear gently. At the top, there's a nose bridge, which is supposed to rest on your nose. And in between, there's this space to cover your mouth and your nose properly. You put it to your face, pull the elastic cord to your ear, pull it down to cover your face properly. Then you bend the nose bridge to fit on your nose properly and you make sure it covers your mouth and your chin and you are good to go.